Christine. Uh, I'm Des Wilco, of course. And uh, what we're uh, trying to do here, of course, is uh, build the Institute of Lutheran Theology. And I'm happy to report to you that we have made uh, tremendous strides in the last year. So this is the state of the ILT report uh, to the Oxforders. You might see this. Uh, you can see uh, that we, of course, do have a web page. It is functional. Uh, it uh, talks about uh, five theological emphases of the Institute of Lutheran Theology, should any of you be interested in that. Uh, these are presuppositions. They're of a presuppositional nature. So, I mean, obviously, we're all about uh, grace available through Jesus the Christ and the centrality of Christ uh, in justifying sinners. Of course, we're all about that. But we believe that in order to make that claim robust, certain presuppositions must be brought back into focus. Proposition number of, presupposition number one, theological realism, uh, over and against the Kantian paradigm and much of the history of Lutheran theology in the last 200 years on the continent of Europe and here in America, we hold that God exists external to human awareness, perception, conception, and language. This may seem like an odd thing to hold uh, to some. Perhaps not here would anyone find this problematic, but there are some quarters of Freudians who don't like this kind of language uh, because it sounds like philosophy of religion and trying to unveil the hidden God. Yeah. Uh, the Institute of Lutheran Theology uh, never believes you can unveil the hidden God. God is hidden, but uh, Luther started with the presupposition that there was a God, you see. Um, that's why he was so. Uh, 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 that's why he had an effect. You have to believe that there is something that exists over and apart from you in order to have this experience. Uh, if it's worked up out of your own uh, subjectivity, it's not quite the same. You can't work piety up there, and you can't work uh, wrath. You can't work the attitude of wrath above your uh, number two, we believe that uh, language about God and about God's relationship to us is, in principle, true or false. That this language is not merely expressive of human subjectivity or some elaborate uh, rules, linguistic rules, uh, utilized in a community. But we believe that this language uh, has truth conditions that exist apart from their verifiability. That is to say, if we say that God is in Christ reconciling the world to himself, we believe that's true if we only have God is in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Uh, this may not seem uh, strange to many of you, uh, but this is quite a startling uh, statement right now uh, in theology. Three, uh, we hold uh, the principle of theophysical causation Theophysical causation. We believe that uh, the universe is such that it must be understood in some sense to be a causal artifact of the divine. Right? A causal artifact of the divine. Theophysical. Theophysical causation. That is to say uh, that uh, were God not to have existed, the universe would not have. Four, we hope uh, that uh, we must develop a Lutheran theology of nature. That is to say that Lutherans must be able to talk uh, about first article things in order uh, to uh, counterpoise that their second article brilliance and genius. Uh, and that uh, the second article comes alive in a different way when we have the context of the first article uh, done. Now, the theology of nature is also done in the third article. Okay? Uh, theology of nature is both first and, and third are actions. It's all of them. Uh, but we, we believe that uh, God talk is in principle relatable to talk about the natural world. And again, Kantian paradigm have held the independence thesis that not this language can uh, bridge. Nary can we bridge from value, theology, to fact, nature, right? nature and science. We hold that uh, theological assertions are more than mere value judgments. 
a la ritual and bodhisattva. Five, we hold that there must be some type of scriptural perspicuity. This is an ongoing research effort to figure out uh, how this might be. Uh, we naturally uh, hold that uh, human beings in their fallen state will always encounter scripture in, in uh, an attitude of obscurity. And it will appear obscure to us. Uh, but this is not to say uh, that we uh, must say that it's obscure in and of itself. In fact, the reason I'm pushed in this direction is, of course, that, uh, this is a primitive for Lutheran theology generally. I mean, it's the only way we can make it happen uh, if we're not going to go to the magisterium, right? Uh, and, you know, we got to have some principle of scriptural perspicuity, and uh, we're at work on that. In fact, we're teaching a course, I'm teaching a course to our students, uh, where we're going through the various uh, schools of ancient and medieval interpretation on our way to uh, uh, trying to get some resolution uh, on this issue. Uh, of course, I could talk about that the whole time. Uh, let's not do that. I want to talk about the Institute. Uh, over the last two or three years, the Institute has been functioning basically in its lay program. You run, might remember a couple of years ago, you saw a little snatch of gymnastic and teaching confessions over at Old Sanctuary. Things have advanced a long ways since then. We still do our uh, lay programming, uh, but we have uh, two schools, the lay school and the graduate school now. And uh, on the lay school side, we have our uh, Christian Life series, which is six week sections, sessions for uh, congregations. But we also have our rapid pastoral certification program and, and uh, certificate of ministry program. And these uh, programs uh, are attempts uh, to get, and maybe Julie can hand that, that out, the Rapid Pastoral Certification Program. Uh, these programs are attempts to actually uh, do something like the ELCA did in its team series, only we're trying to do it much better. So what we try to do is we, uh, we uh, give our students three courses, and then they are uh, turned loose if they can find it preaching pulpit. Uh, many of them already have one because uh, a lot of these rural congregations don't have a pastor to serve them. And they preach and then they take the next nine courses uh, while they're doing this. So it's a 12 course certification program. Uh, this semester I'm teaching principles of biblical interpretation, which is actually a systematics course. It's not an exegetical Bible course. It's a systematics course. And that's on purpose because we want to beat down the Schleiermachian Fisher uh, between uh, the uh, systematics, quote, uh, slash theological part of the uh, faculty and, and Bible. Well, they must, uh, we believe, uh, some opposites to the other. Uh, the second uh, RPC course is being taught by uh, Dr. Bill Russell, you know him, uh, Luther and the Catechisms. And the third is called Claiming God's Word. It's uh, a uh, homiletics course, and it's being taught by both Randy Freund uh, and uh, Scott Grover up at uh, Faith Luther. All right, so that's the uh, Rapid Pastoral Certification Program. Uh, we will be offering three courses a semester. It's a two-year program. We've got five students that came into that program. There are four, four students that came into that program this semester. Uh, some of them are quite good, and we're excited by that. Okay. Uh, we also have our Masters of Divinity Program, so uh, Julie will send those around. Uh, we, of course, cannot uh, offer an accredited Master of Divinity uh, yet, uh, but the necessary condition for the possibility of receiving accreditation is you actually graduate students. So we have to start with where we are and uh, offer this uh, program. We've got five students in our Master of Divinity program, which we think is just wonderful, uh, because we're up and running with uh, 12 students, actually 13, how many students? I 13 students. Okay, we are up with 13 students. Master of Divinity. Yeah, the Master of Divinity program. Uh, and this program is our graduate uh, school, our first program in our graduate school. We hope to uh, add a Master's of Theology courses, uh, Master's of Sacred Theology, and someday a PhD program because we want to be a VO Lutheran graduate school. Uh, the curriculum. Um, 
they actually take those first three courses that are in the RPC program. But after that, every course is different. So we're coming with uh, four courses actually uh, in the fall, in the spring.